The main focus of the brief was accommodating the three generations of family. So Kate and Richard and their son Alexander and Kate's father all needed to live here. And so the biggest challenge in the brief was accommodating those three generations, but giving each of them a space to have some privacy or to come together. We looked at a lot of houses before we bought this one, but what we really liked about it was the 1950s bones of the place. Mm. So I guess when, when you were talking about the extension, were you worried at all that there might be a clash between the new and the old? Not so much, because as soon as Ben started doing the designs and the plans, we could see that he was referencing the old in the new. And I think you can see that in the way, for example, the high windows in the old part mm. are echoed here in the new, the new extension. So, Kate, you're not going to try and tell me that this door is part of the original 1950s house, are you? No, but we love the door. What was originally here was a, a very narrow opening into the kitchen and we wanted to widen it a bit so that there was better access yep, into the kitchen. the kitchen. Yeah. Well, that works. Originally, you know, we'd been a bit sad that we couldn't hang a, a nice piece of art there. Mm. But in effect, the door becomes the piece of art. Yeah, it does. How does this arrangement work for you? Oh, it works well, David. Uh, I can move around easily. It's a kind of sitting room as well as a bedroom. Mm. Oh, and in addition, uh, I interact with my family. Yeah, so you uh, feel connected as well as yeah, having private space. Absolutely. It's really quite impressive that you're accommodating three generations in a relatively modest space. What this project demonstrates is that through some careful consideration to design, uh, and some careful layout in floor planning. You yeah. don't need to build the huge houses that tend to be typical in, in new estates these days yeah, that are taking everywhere. up an enormous amount of land. Uh, they're not sustainable and um, they're not probably good for the future of residential design. Externally, we wanted to have an honesty that showed where the separation of old and new occurred. And we've taken some subtle references matching the existing roof pitch, but we've used different materials. OK, so there's a nice link. The roof shape is kind of talking to the original house. Yep. But the materials clearly define it as a new, a new building. Absolutely. From this spot in the new extension, there's an amazing sense of transparency through this house. I can see through the original house to the front courtyard, through to the sky and the trees, through the highlight windows, out into the new courtyard through these big picture windows. It's almost, I feel, like I'm part of the outside. The original house was built in the middle of the Menzies era, even before Lake Burley Griffin was in Canberra. And yet, with a modest intervention, it's working really well as a successful contemporary home. <laughs> My first house that I bought was actually in Curtin, so I know this suburb pretty well. It was essentially an entire suburb built in the 1960s. But the current trend is to knock over the original modest bungalows and build McMansions that consume the entire site. Well, the house that we're going to see today, Boomerang House, has taken a completely different approach. So, the Boomerang House. That's right. From the street, this looks like very much it's the original facade, is that right? It is. Nothing much has changed out the front. Even right. the rose bush is still in place. Original rose bushes? Yeah, it is. Yeah. So what are we talking? What sort of year was this built? 1964. 64? Maybe I should have worn my flares. <laughs> Let's go in and have a look. So, Joanna, which part of this house is actually the old part and which part is the new part? Well, everything forward of this line right. is the original boomerang. OK. And everything behind that line is the new. Right. There was the original two angles that we were working with, and we've added a third, which is this bulkhead along here, right. which is the new three-degree roof cutting into the old roof. The way that this house was added onto was these stubby bits coming out the back. So we demolished the bits that were added on, the bits that didn't work with the boomerang shape, and really took as our guide the angles of the site and ended up with a shape roughly like that. OK, so you've got uh, the rear boundary and the rear wall of the extension parallel. That's right.
part of the joy of this house is its complexity. There are lots of nooks and crannies, little triangular spaces, but I understand that sort of fit it in with your brief for the building? Well, I get bored very easily. <laughs> I like buildings that are interesting, that have interesting spaces and changes in height. So Joanna, the clients are collectors, I understand. Serious collectors, yes. This was one of the huge challenges for me. There was so much stuff to deal with. They're Arabia from Finland. Mm. It's like a bushfire, that's why I like it. I ended up getting a wee bit carried away, in fact. These were your father's, weren't they? Part of his collection. Yeah, I'm not sure that they actually charged us the right price for it. This is a water bottle collection, I understand. This is the one that started it all off. I bought it in um, Hall in the mid-70s, actually. Oh. I had the mumps when I was in England, and I I actually <laughs> used one, and it was really, really good. So quite, a, quite an extensive collection, then. Mm. Mm. So how did you manage this steeply sloping site? Well, the approach we took was that we had to have a middle level mm -hmm. so that you were in the garden before you realised it and you didn't have a full set of steps to walk down. And so this is the rear wall that's parallel to the rear boundary, yeah? Yeah, and I guess this produced a very compact and usable garden shape mm. um, that they now use much more than the garden they previously had. There's real opportunity in taking something that may not be working that well, but using it as a springboard to create a really interesting design solution. Boomerang House is a great example of the benefits to be gained by not throwing the baby out with the bathwater.